Was there ever a time you're thankful the pandemic happened? What was the reason? First child born right at the beginning of it, being off from work with benefits for months longer than expected gave me so much more time with my child and wife than I ever would have had. Time spent like that is impossible to replicate later. Our last child was born in the middle of quarantine. The extra time at home with my wife and all of our kids is absolutely priceless. I drew with them, danced, learned Sully songs, and got to hold them so much more. It was a good, bad thing for us. The shutdown delayed surgery my dad needed, and that delay might have been part of why the surgery didn't go well when it was completed, though there's no way to know and we believe the doctors did all they could for someone whose heart had worked very hard for a very long time. But when we did move forward with that operation and things didn't go well, I was able to move home for a month and a half, working remotely with flexible hours which is not how teaching usually works, of course, to help him and mom, talk to doctors, keep him company, share memories and laughter, and be there on the day my mother had to decide to turn off the machines and say goodbye to the only man she's ever loved he was her other half since they were 16 years old. It was the hardest and most painful thing I have ever experienced. And I'm so grateful that I got to experience it. My grandma was with my grandpa since he was 18 and it was so hard for him when she suddenly passed away. I'm sorry for what you've had to go through with losing your dad. Mine passed away when I was younger and it was very difficult. I'm glad you got to spend lots of time with him towards the end. Sending love and good thoughts to you and your family. I know it will be buried but I really wanted to tell this somewhere so here we go. I am very anxious. Most probably have social anxiety but I didn't go to a doctor for a diagnosis. Anyway, in the autumn of 2020 I started high school, and none of my previous classmates were in my class. At the beginning, I had to go physically to school and, even if just half the class was present, we were split in two halves and one group went to school and the other took online classes. Switching every week, I would come home exhausted. It was a lot of social interaction and new people, so a lot of anxiety, and it was too much. Luckily, I only went for three weeks until the COVID situation got worse and we switched to full online. This helped a lot by taking away anxiety-inducing factors like how I look, how I speak and things like that. Also, the interactions, both with teachers and classmates on Discord, didn't feel so direct so they produced less anxiety. It was also easier to be in a conversation but not saying anything online than physical. One day, a group that formed added me on their Discord, which only contained about 15 people of my class, because they needed one more player in an Among Us game and knew I was a nice guy, probably because I also shared me homework with people from there a few times. Since then I started to enter their calls and slowly relax around them. After a few months, I could finally feel comfortable around them, and I actually felt like hey, I actually made some friends. I also went out with them outside a few times, while we were in tea in quarantine, which helped me develop even more. Overall, the quarantine and spending time online allowed me to take everything slower and gave me time to feel comfortable around these new people and in these new situations. And here I am now, with only one week of school left as a totally different person than I was nine months before. I made friends, I grew more social, I kinda discovered my clothing taste. I am still in the process of figuring this out but I am getting somewhere, and I grew my self-esteem. Sure, COVID wasn't the only thing that helped me achieve this. It took a lot of effort, motivation, hope and support from my sister, but I can't deny that little things like spending time online rather than physical, or a silly game like Among Us helped me start my growing process. There is still more to be done, my development isn't over yet and I still have things to work on, but I am so proud of myself, of the person that I am growing into and I am so thankful to all the people that helped me get here. If you are in a very low spot in life, remember that seemingly small things can butterfly effect into a huge avalanche of events that positively impact your life. All you have to do is wait to see what Tom Mora will bring. I want to end this with a lyric from my favorite artist, that I might also tad to on myself or something lol. Hopeless change is over time.
was given the opportunity to keep my job, work from home, and move out of state. The only thing keeping me in my home state was my job, great pay, insane benefits, etc. So when they told me I could get out of Dodge, and keep my spot with the company, I didn't even need to consider. Did they give some sort of assurance if things got more normal and they went back to working at the workplace? Would they ask you to get back to your old city or do they have another branch where you are now or would you continue to work from home? Those who opted to work from home permanently were pretty much told that if we chose to, we were stuck with it unless there were any special circumstances where we would need to come back in completely. For those of us who need to travel to the office from time to time, they basically have docking stations now where we can plug in our laptop and it turns it into a three-monitor setup. We were, are growing extremely fast, and right at the time of being forced to work from home. We were way over capacity in our office, like, our facilities manager was just throwing desks up against random walls for new hires because our original floor plan couldn't accommodate how many people we had working in the office. Hey, same thing happened to me. It takes a lot to get yourself help, I'm proud of you for doing that and I'm glad you're doing better now smile. Ed, thank you guys so much for the awards. Instead of giving your money to Reddit please donate to your local suicide hotline if you can smile. Edit 2. Here is a link to donate to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They do some great work and we donate to them from time to time smile. Okay, without going into too much the week lockdown happened my ex moved out. It was a bad relationship but I was in denial. So now I was locked inside with a lot of big feelings and nowhere to go. It forced me to confront myself, a lot of my own mental issues and a lot of my own trauma. I hated it, resisted it and fought it. Eventually though I learned to work on myself slowly, and I don't think that would have happened without lockdown. Exact same thing happened with me. In a toxic relationship for 10 years that I knew wasn't right, was broken up within June of last year, and with nothing to do but sit with emotions I could never face before, it forced me inward. I've grown so much over the past year and that wouldn't have happened without the pandemic and having nothing to take my mind off myself. I'm grateful for the time given to me this past year. This is the best person I've been in four decades. Same buddy same. Sometimes I think about myself and feel so humbled how I actually came this far. Essentially just being a bozo in an underwear. Shout out to everyone making progress that no one recognizes because you never let anyone see your darkest moments. You've been silently winning battles and transforming yourself. Be proud of every step you're making in the right direction. Keep going because you got this. Ended mine about two months prior to lockdown and was out of work on medical leave from a breakdown. I am positive I wouldn't be alive today if we were in lockdown together and I had to return to work. Instead I've had time to nourish myself and I am doing better than I've ever dreamed possible. I am so glad you got that time for yourself. It can be so difficult to make space for our mental and emotional health these days but especially before. Yes, it made me slow down and reevaluate what I was doing with my life. I cut out people who were dragging me down, and reconnected with old friends through group Zoom calls. Changed jobs, started taking care of my body and lost 30 pounds. Found a new hobby. I do wish I made these changes years ago, instead of waiting for a global health crisis to kick my butt into gear. Ed, uh, thank you to everyone who took the time to read my comment. And to those who responded, reading all your responses truly made my day. It's reinforced that we're all in this together, even if we're physically apart, doing the best we can. I went through a similar things as you and I wished I changed years ago as well. However, I realized quarantine allowed time to figure myself out. I wasn't stressed about other aspects of my life and I had to face my problems instead of ignoring them. I know for a fact that without the pandemic I would have continued my life ignoring my mental health and other problems. Be proud of the person you are now even if it took you a while, and a global pandemic, to get there.
The slowdown was lovely. My husband and I juggled childcare for our special needs kid while working six, seven part time and gig jobs. We hadn't had more than a few long weekends since 2016. The lockdown happened and we spent two glorious weeks together. For the next two months, I only worked two jobs. We're now back to four jobs, but it feels easy comparatively, and our family gets to spend time together since we live quite frugally. The stimulus money made up for our lost wages, and continues to subsidize our mortgage. I know it's been hard for a lot of people, but for us it was a big break from the status quo. Yeah I realized I was actually depressed during lockdown because all my distractions were gone and I was on my own and had all the time to myself. This whole time I've just been sleeping it off or distracting myself from it. Thing is there's no reason for my depression so I figured it's probably a chemical imbalance. Discussed it with my new GP who actually listened a few times before she prescribed me meds and it was like a fucking fog clearing up. This is my answer too. It has been absolutely terrifying to bring a child into this pandemic nightmare. But having my husband home the whole time has been a blessing. I can't imagine getting through those crazy, blurry nights the first few months and then having to survive all day alone. Not to mention the incredible bond my husband and kid share because he has been there almost every day of her life. Laying down in my senior kitty's bed with him. We are heading to the vet tonight to cross the bridge frown. I am so thankful I got to spend every day with my best friend of 19 years. Cherish the time with your pets. It goes too quick. I'm absolutely crushed right now. Update. I wanted to thank everyone for their kind words. It has truly meant so much and has helped me through today. My little man is now up in kitty heaven. R.I.P. Butters. I work in IT. We had a handful of clients decide to close up their office and stay fully WFH permanently but it was still surprisingly few. Most have so much money invested into their office space that they just refuse not to keep the office fully staffed at all times to justify the expense. Which to me is stupid as shit but I guess if you've sunk tens of thousands into fancy schmancy chrome and leather modern office furniture it just hurts too much to see it sitting there unused. It's a small thing compared to all the horribleness that happened during the pandemic. But I did feel thankful. My 14-year-old dog tore her CCL the week before everything shut down. The vet said she wasn't a good candidate for surgery because of the risks associated with her age. We didn't know what to do. She couldn't put any weight on it at all. A few days later I lost my job and was staying home all day. I spent a few days researching everything I could about dogs and ligaments. Then I got to work. I designed a whole physical therapy routine for my dog and set the plan in motion. And it worked. Within two months she was able to walk normally without a limp. Within four months she was able to move around like she'd never been injured in the first place. I never would have been able to put in all the time with the physical therapy if I hadn't lost my job. So I can't help but feel a bit thankful. My dog is still around happy and healthy. She just stole my sock and ran off into the yard. I love that troublemaker. At the start of 2020, our cat's kidney diseases had progressed to the point that our vet only gave her a few months left. However, I just started a new job that allowed me to work from home, so I got to spend all day with her. By March, both me and my wife were working from home full time and could give her lots of attention and stay on top of giving her fresh food every few hours, etc. We just said goodbye this week, more than 13 months after she was supposed to have left us. The pandemic as an absolute blessing in many ways for us. We're both convinced that it allowed her to keep going for so long and will always be thankful. My dog was 14 when he tore his ACL. But we ended up going for the surgery. Thankfully it worked. But they warned us he would eventually tear the other one. Sure enough, a year later he did but he recovered and learned to deal with it. Today he is 18.5, crazy I know, but he is just about at the end of his road. Congrats on getting to spend so much time with you pup. You won't regret it. I'm not a vet or doctor, so take it with a grain of salt. But here's what I did. My goal was to keep her physically fit, get some blood flowing through that ligament, while also keeping her weight off the ligament. After the tear, 
I started her on Dasuquin to protect the joint and gave her two weeks of rest. After that, I bought a sling that attached around her waist. I started taking her for very short walks several times a day. I would have her in that sling and hold her back legs about an inch off the ground the entire time. Slowly, I started letting her back feet touch the ground, but I was still holding all of her weight through the sling. Her feet would move like she was walking, but I was holding all her weight through the sling. I believe this increased blood flow to the ligament, while avoiding damaging it further by her putting weight on it. Over the course of two months, I gradually carried less of her weight in the sling and let her hold more of her own weight while walking. After two months, I let her walk without the sling. We kept the walks short and went very slowly. Over time, we went farther and farther and picked up the pace a little. It made me realize how bad my relationship was. I hate comparing situations, everyone struggles differently but he didn't talk to me for the first six weeks of the lockdown because his stress was worse than mine. He was at his mom's with his brother, having her cook and clean and basically do everything for him while he played games all day. Meanwhile I had just moved in my own flat, had no bed and very little furniture, no internet and I was struggling to get hold of groceries but despite all that he had it worse. I realized that I needed to look after myself. I proposed to my girlfriend on March 20th. She said yes. Lockdown happened the following day. So she moved in with me into a small two-bedroom apartment. That Wednesday, I got laid off from a job I desperately wanted to quit. Since I got laid off and didn't quit, I got enhanced unemployment, which basically meant I got a raise. A couple months later, we got married. Due to COVID regulations, we could only have 10 people at the wedding, which kept the guest list small for a very good reason that everyone understood and kept their wedding expenses very low. Getting married allowed me to get on my wife's insurance, which was much less expensive than getting it on my own. A little over a month later, I started a job related to pandemic response, which paid very well. I made more during the second half of 2020 than in all of 2019. This income allowed me to save up enough to put a decent down payment on a house, with historically low interest rates. In December, I got another, more stable, job, which required me to work from home. This job pays about the same as the one I had before the pandemic, and it's for a much better company with many more opportunities for advancement. TL semicolon doctor, before, single, renting, in debt, after, married, homeowner, with comfortable nest egg. So many times, before the pandemic I constantly called in sick at work due to a metabolic disorder I have as well as some mental struggles. Once we started working from home, I was able to start dealing with my health problems much better, so I haven't had to call in sick at all. Also I have started a few new hobbies during the pandemic, playing the violin and singing, and I now have a new job. That's a lot better than the job I had at the start of the pandemic. Lastly I have been able to reconnect with some friends I hadn't really been in touch with before the pandemic. So, overall this pandemic has actually been good to me. I got to meet my best friend. He once replied to a post or something and asked if we wanted to play some games together. He was living in the US while I was in Germany but our schedules worked really well together and we got to spend a lot of time together. Over time he and I each introduced some other friends and played different games and now we formed our own friend group. He just recently moved back to Finland and now we play a little less together but I'm really glad to have met him. We are also planning to meet up sometime this or next year with the other guys from our group since we only know each other from gaming together. So many times, before the pandemic I constantly called in sick at work due to a metabolic disorder I have as well as some mental struggles. Once we started working from home, I was able to start dealing with my health problems much better. So I haven't had to call in sick at all. Also I have started a few new hobbies during the pandemic, playing the violin and singing, and I now have a new job. That's a lot better than the job I had at the start of the pandemic. Lastly I have been able to reconnect with some friends I hadn't really been in touch with before the pandemic. So, overall this pandemic has actually been good to me. 
I've been dealing with a pretty bad anxiety disorder the past few years, started right before the pandemic. A year of lockdown has had its own difficulties but not having to go to events or leave my house much was helpful. My husband lost some of his work so he was able to be home more to help out with the kids and house. I was able to pursue counseling and medical care with his help. We were a homeschool family already. But when the neighborhood parents let their kids take the rest of the year off during the first round of lockdowns, we followed suit. That big break was really healing for our family and allowed us to re-examine our approach to education at home, which led to us finding a really great school rhythm and flow. We're thriving now as a family. I'm seeing a therapist and she's helping me reintroduce myself to the outside. I'm honestly really nervous now that things are opening up again. And it's scary out there. Oh well.